Hello friends, welcome to my e-clinic. For recent updates, please subscribe to my channel and leave your valuable comments in the comment box. So, let me remind you, we are studying development of tooth. And if you haven't watched my previous two lectures, in which I have taught about dental lamina and morphological stages of tooth, then please watch that first so that all your concepts get clear. So today we'll study Hertwig's epithelial root sheet. But before that, we will study about the advanced bell stage and then the Hertwig's epithelial root sheet. So we have seen in the earlier lecture that in the bell stage, the inner enamel epithelial cells they cause the peripheral cells of the dental papilla to differentiate into odontoblast. Now what happens in the advanced bell stage? This advanced bell stage is very very important because the mineralization of the tooth and the root formation begins in the advanced bell stage mineralization and the root formation. Now what happens is that most important event occurring in the advanced bell stage is the determination of the future dentino enamel junction. This dentino enamel junction is the outline which is present between the inner enamel epithelium and the odontoblast. This is the future dentino enamel junction. What happens after this is that the odontoblast cells begin their activity. They start to lay down the dentine. This dentine is laid on the future cuspal and incisal areas of the tooth. This dentine formation proceeds in the apical and the pulpal direction. Now, once this dentine is formed, what happens next? The inner enamel epithelial cells, they differentiate into ameloblast. And now, this ameloblast begins their activity by forming enamel on this uniform dentine. Okay? So, we have seen that in the advanced bell stage, the mineralized tissue formation begins. Now, in addition to the mineralization of the tooth structure, another important event occurs in the advanced bell stage, which is the formation of Hertwig's epithelial root sheet. This structure is very, very important because it's responsible for the formation of shape, size, number, length of the root of the tooth. Now what is this Hertwig's epithelial root sheet? When the enamel and the dentine formation, it reaches up to the cemento enamel junction, what happens is that the enamel organ, it bends in its cervical region in a horizontal plane to form the epithelial diaphragm of the root sheet. This is called as the epithelial diaphragm of Hertwig's epithelial root sheet. Now, if we study the enamel organ in detail, so, this is the proliferating pulp. The yellow color is the dentine. Blue is the enamel formed over dentine and the green line is the layer of inner enamel epithelium. The space which contains the black lines is the stellate reticulum cells and the outermost purple is the outer enamel epithelium. So, we have seen that when the enamel and the dentine formation, it reaches up to the future cemento enamel junction the cervical region of the enamel organ. It bends in a horizontal plane to form the epithelial diaphragm. 
This epithelial diaphragm is made up of only two types of cells, which are the inner enamel epithelial cells and the outer enamel epithelium. Remember, the epithelial diaphragm of Holtwig's epithelial root sheet does not contain the stellate reticulum and the stratum intermedium. Now, once we have studied about the structure of Holtwig's epithelial root sheet, then let us study about the actual process of the root formation. This is the uh, simplified diagram of enamel organ showing the epithelial diaphragm. Now, what happens is that inner enamel epithelial cells of this epithelial diaphragm, they induce the dental papilla cells of the root region of the tooth germ to differentiate into odontoblasts. Now, once these cells are differentiated into odontoblast, they begin their activity of dentine formation and the first layer of dentine is formed. The radicular dentine is formed. Once this first layer of radicular dentine is formed, the epithelial root sheet, it stretches apically or it extends apically and it gives rise to more dentine. And this process continues until the entire root formation is complete. Now, as the epithelial root it stretches downwards, what happens is that it does not remain as a continuous layer, but it breaks down in between. You can see here, it breaks down in between. And it persists on the root surface and is found in the periodontal ligament. And these remnants of Holtwig's epithelial root sheet are called as cell rests of malices. These are nothing but the clumps of epithelial cells of the root sheet. Now once the dentine is formed and the Holtwig's epithelial root sheet loses its continuity, what happens into the surrounding dental sac? The dental sac which surrounds the tooth germ, the cells of the connective tissue of the dental sac, they begin to proliferate. As they proliferate, these cells come in contact with the radicular dentine and once they come in contact with the radicular dentine, they differentiate into cementoblasts. Now, when the cementoblasts are formed in the dental sac, connective tissue, they begin their activity that is formation of cementum over the layer of dentine. In this way, the cementum is deposited over the dentine. Now, let us see why the lower molars are made up of two roots and the third molar are made up of three roots. We have seen that the cervical area of the enamel organ, they form the epithelial diaphragm. So, if we see this, this cervical area in the cross section, in the lower molars we can see two diaphragms which are arising. These diaphragm, they grow towards each other and finally merge to form two roots of the lower molars. Okay. Now, while what happens is in the third molars, there are formation of three such diaphragms which fuse to form the three roots of upper molar. Now, this process of root formation is not perfect. There are certain loopholes two low holes in this process. Uh, these are the formation of enamel pearls and second is the formation of accessory canal on the root surface. Now we will see one by one how are these enamel pearls and accessory canals formed. We have seen in the process of root formation as the dentine formation continues the Holtwig's epithelial root sheet it breaks down and it moves away from the dentine. But in the case of Hertwig's epithelial root sheet, it persists on the dentine surface for a longer time. 
the inner enamel epithelial cells they differentiate into ameloblasts and these ameloblasts will lay down the root surface they finally lay down enamel on the root surface and these enamel progress are called as the enamel pearls these enamel pearls are mostly found in the furcation area of the multi-rooted teeth now the second structural abnormality is the formation of accessory canals in the epithelial root sheet it loses its continuity prior to the dentine formation another structural abnormality appears on the root surface which is the formation of the accessory canals on the root surface and these accessory canals are also found in the furcation areas of the multi-rooted teeth so in this lecture we have studied about advanced bell stage in detail and the hertwig's epithelial root sheet and the process of the root formation hope the concepts are clear in the next lecture, we will be studying about the histophysiology of the development of tooth. Friends, I refer only standard books for preparing this tutorial. After seeing this video, I request to read the book once so that the topic will be permanently remembered and concepts would be clear. That's all for now. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.